Hi, my name's Mike Cavanaugh, and I'm here to introduce you to Toyota's latest entry into the performance car marketplace. And I figured what better place to start than here in Toyota's museum, because this car comes from a long line of performance vehicles. There's even some of this rare 2000 GT in it. Now that is a beautiful car. Maybe you thought that was the last Toyota vehicle you'd ever see with a double wishbone suspension in it. And up to a certain time, that was true. But that's not true anymore. Toyota's heritage, boy. Well, it keeps getting better and better every year. New ideas, always right there at the cutting edge of technology. There's a long line of solid, innovative, well-engineered performance automobiles. Toyota's racing experience has moved this technology through a series of production cars, each of which has had a design that was sporty and yet practical for the mass market here in the United States. The cars used systems that were practical, they were proven, and they had a high degree of reliability. Each new model was a refinement of what had come before and also incorporated the best of the new technology. <laughs> Look at this. Can you imagine driving this to work every day? This thing looks fast just sitting there. Well, all this history has now come together in one car that represents the best of everything Toyota's learned, past and present. The 1986 and a half Supra. It's sleek, it's efficient, with aerodynamic, low drag styling. All this race car technology has now come together in one car that's street legal. That's an incredible feat. Toyota set out to create a car that would rank as one of the best sports cars available. The result? A car with magnificent handling and performance, but still affordable by the sports car enthusiast. You're looking at a front engine car with rear wheel drive that accelerates from zero to 60 in an incredibly short distance, considerably shorter than the 300ZX Turbo. Its braking performance is world class, from 60 to zero in 122 feet right there with the Corvettes and Ferraris and Lamborghinis. This car has achieved some demanding design objectives. Outstanding chassis performance, a sporty yet powerful exterior styling, and at the same time, it's classy, roomy, comfortable and quiet. In the next few minutes, you're going to find out a lot of the details on what's new in this new Supra. Most important, you'll see the technical changes and the new technical procedures you'll need for working on the car. So let's get started. There are several things that qualify this Supra more than ever for the high performance category, like an advanced innovative suspension and a more powerful engine that features a low inertia valve train and four valves per cylinder, and lots more besides. Top item on the list is the suspension. It's the uniqueness of the suspension design that gives this car its truly superb handling and ride characteristics. According to our test, the car generates about one G of lateral acceleration. Incredible. Better than the 300ZX Turbo. A big part of how it does that is the double wishbone on all four wheels. That's standard on racing cars. Off the track, you could only find it on cars like the Lotus and Ferrari. Now the Supra has joined them. Great company. The double wishbone minimizes camber changes during bound and rebound. At the same time, the geometry has been designed to provide comfort as well as improved handling. The suspension was tested in conjunction with Lotus to make sure it achieved its design goals. The upper and lower A arms were given different lengths with the design goal of making the camber as close as possible to zero continuously. The front suspension features a lightweight upper A arm made of aluminum for quicker reaction. There's a long span lower L arm. And looking from the front, you can see a stabilizer bar used to minimize changes in camber. But it's the rear suspension that deserves most of the credit for improved handling. The upper A arm is aluminum. The lower two arms form a trapezoid shape to handle lateral forces. And notice the use of a radius rod. It handles the longitudinal forces. 
Both front and rear critical suspension members feature specially designed rubber bushings with metal inserts. And check out these ball joints. It all means less friction and vibration. Notice the offset of these wheels. It centers the load on the angular ball bearings. You'll find ventilated disc brakes on all four wheels with an inner drum type parking brake at the rear and with bigger rotors, an inch and three quarters bigger in the front, an inch in the rear. Incidentally, notice the differential. It's a limited slip with air cooling fins. And how about this tire? 225-50 VR16 Gatorback. No, you've never seen anything like it before. It was developed by Goodyear just for the new Supra. And look at this difference. First time you've ever seen a 50 aspect ratio tire on a Toyota. It was designed to make the most of this new suspension by increasing the footprint while minimizing sidewall flex. The engineers call these wheels <laughs> unidirectional. That's their way of saying the wheels are made to go only on one side. They're designed to move some air across the brakes like a fan from underneath the car. So if you have to take the wheels off, they must not be switched. They go back on the same side they were on originally. This car also has TEMS, the Toyota Electronic Modulated Suspension. It senses the driving conditions and instantaneously adjusts the damping force on the shock absorbers for the best ride. The Thames computer monitors vehicle speed, steering pace, brakes, and automatic transmission. Using these inputs, it instantly resets the shocks to reduce body roll, dive, and squat. The driver can select normal or sport, but if the computer senses a requirement, it'll instantly switch to firm. To brush up on the Thames, you'll find a lot of detail in the Supra New Car Features book. Now let's take a walk over the alignment rack. Alignment is more important than ever to get the most out of such a sophisticated suspension. On this car, camber and toe can be adjusted on the rear wheels as well as on the front. Let's take a minute to review caster and camber. Camber is how far off the wheel is from vertical. Ordinarily, the suspension is designed to provide positive camber, the tops leaning outward. But on the new Supra, the camber is negative for both the front and rear wheels. On the front, that's a change from 30 minutes positive to 15 minutes negative to improve cornering. That 1G has to come from somewhere. Now, caster is the angle between the steering axis and vertical. For straight line stability, caster has been pushed up from four and a half degrees all the way up to eight degrees. Again, it takes a lot of fine touches to make a car that handles as well as this one. There's a chart in the repair manual that you use with the front wheel alignment procedure. Here's how it works. You take your readings of caster and camber from the vehicle. Then you go to the manual and you mark your readings on the chart. Then find the correct vehicle specs and from there, draw a line across and down to join your marks. Then you'll see how many adjustments to turn each cam to hit the alignment right on. This new procedure should reduce the trial and error and that's good news. Remember, on the rear wheels, you adjust only toe and camber. You do it using the same adjustment cams. Also, remember to jounce the car before you make your adjustment, then jounce it again before you recheck it, and road test the car when you've got it right on. After the suspension, the most important news about this car is the engine. It's a new version of the reliable M-series engines, six cylinders, in line, but with improvements that make it one of the most advanced, normally aspirated engines available. The displacement is up from 2.8 to an impressive 3.0 liters. But the big news here is the state-of-the-art four-valve technology. Toyota is a world leader in this design with more four-valve engines on the street than anyone else. This engine's also got double overhead camshafts. And as in our other twin overhead cam engines, the valve train no longer uses lash adjusters. Instead, 
The valves are operated directly by the camshaft lobes. The reduced mass allows the engine to respond quicker. Besides the valves, the highlights on this engine that we're going to talk about include the Toyota Computer Control System, or TCCS, the intake air control system, the new injection arrangement of the electronic fuel system, the dual speed fuel pump, and a few more items along the way. First of all, the TCCS. As you know, the internal microcomputer gets inputs of airflow, throttle position, vehicle speed, water temperature, intake air temperature, and others. It uses all that information to control the timing and duration of the injectors, provide optimum ignition timing, adjust the intake air control valve and the idle speed, and so on. You'll find the TCCS computer in its familiar position above the glove box. Next, the intake air control system. When the Toyota engineers call this engine one of the most advanced of any car in its class, they point to the intake air control system as a large part of the reason. Let's see why. Normally, an engine is set up for either economy or high performance, and this performance is usually limited to a particular range. What this intake air control system does is adjust the manifold tuning to match driving conditions. They've divided the manifold in half, and they've placed an air control valve in the middle. The position of the valve is set by the computer based on throttle angle and engine speed. When the valve is closed, the full length of the manifold is used, creating a ram air or inertial effect. When opened, the valve disrupts this effect and reduces the intake resistance. When the throttle angle is greater than 60 degrees, that is, when high performance is desired, closing the valve at low engine speed and opening it at high speeds delivers high performance across a very broad range. For normal driving, or throttle angles less than 60 degrees, the system is reversed. Open for low speeds, closed for high speeds. This maximizes fuel economy. Toyota has given this new Super the best of both worlds, economy and performance. Now, in operation, the VSV receives a signal from the computer. It responds by opening a pathway from the vacuum tank to the actuator on the intake manifold. You can test the operation of the actuator with a hand vacuum pump in the usual way. When you create a vacuum, it should cause the valve to close. Now this, this is a new fuel injector. At first glance, it might look like the one on the current Supra, but this one's for the new Supra, and there's something very different about it. Twin nozzles. The two nozzles match the two intake ports. This injector is the type that requires a resistor in the circuit. The resistor block is here on the driver's side of the engine compartment. To run a check on the circuit, connect one end of your ohmmeter to the B-plus connection of the resistor bank. Check the reading between there and each of the other three pins. The reading should be about three ohms in each case. The cold start injector is also a new type again with a new type of nozzle. But the electrical circuit is the same, and you check it the same way as on the current Supra. On the subject of fuel injection, the really important news has to do with timing. The new engine incorporates an innovative pattern that Toyota calls three-group fuel injection. Instead of injecting fuel into the manifold all at once for all six cylinders, it's injected individually at the intake port of each cylinder, but for a pair of cylinders at a time. 4, 1, 5, 3, 6, 2. Three groups for the six cylinders. It's an innovative system that cuts down on hydrocarbons in the exhaust and improves engine response at the same time. Now we come to the fuel pump. It's a high capacity pump that can be set by the ECU to run at a lower speed. As before, the pump is located in the fuel tank. The control relay for the pump which is located on the passenger side inner front fender, now has a new speed control resistor next to it. 
The pump normally operates at full speed. But when the computer senses that the engine is idling or the car is at low speed cruise, it activates the relay. The current now passes through the resistor. That means less voltage to the fuel pump, causing it to operate at a lower speed, which is quieter and saves energy. In the fail safe mode, the coil is not activated and the pump runs at full speed to protect against starving the engine. When you're troubleshooting the fuel pump circuit, unplug the connector and check the resistor with an ohm meter. It should read about 0.7 ohms. Be sure to double check the wiring diagram because both the theft deterrent system and the clutch start switch are on the same circuit as the fuel pump. And there's one other change with the fuel pump circuit. As you know, the current Supra has a separate diagnostic plug for the fuel pump. In the new Supra, a single diagnostic plug now serves for the TCCS, ECT transmission, and fuel pump. As you can see, there's a lot about this car that's going to please the buyer, including a lot of things you'll never even see. Now let's take a look at some of the things he will see. When it comes to the interior, Toyota has incorporated a great number of luxury and convenience improvements. There's now a security light that comes on when the theft deterrent system is armed and then starts flashing. This light gives visible warning that the vehicle has an alarm system and that the system is armed. The light continues flashing until the door is unlocked with the key. The system also now detects if the rear hatch or engine hood is forcibly opened. Another feature in the system. When it's activated, a starter cut circuit now disables the starter by cutting power to the starter relay. Toyota's making it harder and harder to earn a living as a car thief. The steering wheel offers the convenience of memory tilt and to telescopes as well. Cruise control is now standard equipment and features self-diagnostic functions. And the control switches are now conveniently positioned on the steering wheel. But the initial pleasant surprise for the driver is the seat. The eight-way sport seat from the GTS Celica is standard. In addition to all the standard motions, forward and back, reclining, and headrest, it also has controls on the console for the power lumbar and side adjustments. The lumbar and side adjustments are motor driven. There's also an optional nine-way seat. In addition to all the functions of the eight-way model, it also provides power forward, backward, and vertical movement. Seat cushion height at both front and rear is independently adjustable too. The heating air conditioning controls are now all push button even the temperature setting function. The minor differences in the climate control system include the position of the heater core. It was previously positioned like this. The new position reduces airflow resistance through the heater unit and improves overall ventilation. The air distribution system now incorporates air ducts built into the doors that direct defrost air against the driver's and passenger's windows. The instrument panel has instruments and controls grouped so they're easy to read and easy to reach. The super monitor system is now available as an option. The system provides eight functions, including clock and calendar, and provides a countdown timer with an alarm. It now also shows the amount of fuel used, and after an oil change, the owner can reset a feature called distance remaining until maintenance. The system will then give him an alarm and readout when it's time to bring in the car for an oil change or other service. If an owner brings in a car that has displayed an engine warning indication, you'll need to follow the same procedure of connecting the T and E1 terminals on the diagnostic check connector and reading the flashes on the check engine light. Now you've done this on the new Celicas and Cressidas, but if it's an 86 and a half Supra with a super monitor system, you won't even have to pop the hood. Instead, you obtain the calendar display on the super monitor. Then press the select and M button simultaneously and hold them until DIAG appears. Then hold down the set button for about three seconds. The diagnostic codes will appear on the screen in order. If the TCCS, ECT, and cruise control are operating properly, you'll get an OK display for each. If you get any code other than OK, 
you'll need to check your repair manual. It'll tell you how to interpret the problem code in the TCCS, ECT, or cruise control, plus it'll provide some good tips on troubleshooting. Don't forget to follow the steps for canceling the computer's trouble code memory after you've made the repair. And then take the car for a test drive and recheck and make sure all the systems are okay. <laughs> One last item I wouldn't want to forget. The Supra's new audio system. It's a top-of-the-line system for a top-of-the-line car. Let's check it out. There's a grid antenna in the rear window, new to the Supra. That's in addition to the post antenna. These two antennas are part of the Supra's diversity antenna system. For optimum FM reception, an electronic circuit in the radio continuously compares the signals from each antenna and instantly shifts to the one giving the best reception. And there's more good news for the serious audio buff. The speakers themselves. All four are bass reflex speakers designed to enhance those low frequency sounds even at low volume. And each is built into its own enclosure box. The sound is so good, the owner may not want to get out of the car at the end of his trip. That's the 1986 and a half Supra. It's an impressive automobile with lots of innovative engineering. And there's more big news coming. Your dealership will soon be getting a new panel van. You'll be hearing the details of it shortly. You've now got the highlights on the new Supra. While the details are still fresh in your mind, there's no time like right now to get out your quiz sheet, finish it, and send it in. And if you haven't been taking advantage of the tech training courses, you've been missing a good bet. There's a short course coming up on the new Supra and others well worth taking. Plan to get involved.